Hi everyone, this is Jacqueline Casey and Sean Busey with another D&D How-To. Thanks for being here, Sean. I always appreciate your expertise. Thank you for having me. Glad <laughs> to be here uh, in quarantine once again. <laughs> in this video, we're going to walk through a basic combat encounter. We did not pre-plan the actual moves with this, so we'll just see what happens. We've selected three characters um, on the side of good to represent the different styles of combat. Yeah. So first I have Gwendolyn, who's the tiefling warlock, who she is not a um, traditional combatant. She uses magic. Yeah. yeah, she is not suited for melee. No. Or, you know, bows and arrows, anything like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then we've selected two characters that I play. We have uh, Reardon. Um, he's a, a ranger, specially suited for ranged combat, hence his bow. And then uh, Dorn, who is a cleric. He can also use magic, but I think, you know, for the, the, the strategy he has in mind for the, the upcoming attack, I think he's going to focus more on his hammer to differentiate his, his combat from that of, of Gwen. Great. And um, so I will be playing as Gwen and the monsters, which I would traditionally, I would be the DM and only play as the monsters, but because we want some different characters, I will also play the magic character. And, and then... And being in quarantine, we don't exactly have a lot of people around <laughs> to play as everybody. We so. are our own household. Yes. <laughs> Um, and then Sean will be playing his characters of uh, Dorn and Reardon. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you want to explain the setup of how we came to this altercation? Yeah, so the basic setup that we, uh, we are using is that the party uh, has been hired to, to solve some, some goblin trouble that a local village has been having. So in the, the dark hours of the early morning... The party used the cover of darkness to sort of sneak up on this little camp. Uh, you can see they're all hidden behind bushes. The goblins and the bugbears don't know the party is there. Which means surprise attack. Yeah, so we will demonstrate a surprise attack. Right. You ready? I am if you are. Let's roll for initiative. All right. So for initiative, this is where you determine the order people take in combat. And you roll your d20 for that. Uh, so <laughs> Dorn rolled really well. He got two. And Reardon rolled really well. He got 21. Wow. The higher, the better. Right. And then I'll roll for Gwen. And she's 17 plus one, so she got 18. And then... Would you want to go ahead and roll for the goblins? Sure. Um, let's see. There are a total of five enemies. So let's say the three goblins. Let's see. One got a three. <laughs> the other got a six. And the other got a 20. All right. And then we have two uh, bugbears. Two bugbears. And they got a three and a 16. Wow. So... With all of those, we now know uh, an approximate order that everyone will take in combat. Uh, our DM over there will, will put it all into a, a list so it's easy to track for combat. DMs uh, have that responsibility of keeping track on who goes and when, mm -hmm. and also the amount of damage somebody has taken, um, what attacks they can do. A DM has to know a lot and manage it so that combat flows, players don't get bored or frustrated with a lack of progress. Uh, it's um, Which now you're making me feel like I'm really slow. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 not at all. I'm just kidding. This is There are all sorts of tools that DMs can use, everything from cards that you pass out so everyone just kind of keeps track of initiative th themselves. We're going straight forward here. So I have, um, I wrote down everybody's scores, and mm -hmm. then now I'm putting them in order, 
and I have a tie between a goblin one and the bugbear one, so I'm going to have him roll again for those two characters. Okay. So the goblin rolled a two. Okay. And the bugbear rolled an 18. So I'm just going to put the bugbear first. Yeah, that's a tiebreaker. And then the goblin second. Little tiebreaker roll. Yeah. That's also how I do that when I DM. Okay. So here we go. Uh, first off, we have Reardon with Reardon. his massive 21. <laughs> yeah, he rolled He rolled really well. So he is an expert at ranged combat. Now, the party doesn't, or the, the bugbears and the goblins don't know the party is there. So this will trigger a surprise round of combat. Mm -hmm. uh, because the party obviously knows they're there. What that means is that in the first round, none of the monsters are going to get an attack. Right. Because they're surprised. They're, everything they do in this round is going, oh no, we've been found and are under attack. So oh. Reardon, uh, he's going to take his bow. Um, he gets a really heavy bonus to his attack roll. He gets plus seven. So whatever he rolls, add seven to it. He rolled a 15, so plus 7 is 22. So he hit. He hits. Uh, he's shooting at this bugbear right here. Uh, bugbears have an armor armor class of 16, I believe. That means he, ne he needs to roll at least a 16 in order to hit him. His attack roll was 22. He hits. Very uh, good. The damage for his bow is 1d8, which is one of these. And then he adds three to that for his bonuses. Uh, he rolled the three plus three. He does six damage to the bugbear. Nice. Nicely done. So on my side, I have the bugbear's uh, hit points. And I'm just going to tell you what they are. They are 27. So I'm going to take six, you said, off of 27. So yeah. he has 21 points left. Right there. Um, I just assumed that Reardon hit because it was a, what, a 22? 22, that's that's very high. Yes, and so, but the bugbear's AC, his armor class, is 16. So yeah. you have to get a 16 or more in order to hit. Yes. So who would be next if not for the surprise round? It would be Gwendolyn. Ah. And so that's going to be me. And I'm going to shuffle a paper. And... <laughs> And then we're going to, um, I'm going to have her do her favorite thing, which is create bonfire. She likes to do this because it doesn't give her position away um, and because she, she, she needs to hide. So we're going to go ahead and do create bonfire, which is a dex save for whatever monster she's aiming at. So she's actually going to go for the bugbear 2. Or no, bug, bugbear also. Bugbear one also. Okay. All right. So what that means with a deck save is that this character, uh, Gwen doesn't roll a traditional attack roll like Reardon just did. Instead, the bugbear has to roll based on his uh, attribute dexterity score. Mm -hmm. And whether or not the attack fails or succeeds depends on his roll. Right. So I'm going to roll a d20 for the bugbear. And he's at 11, and he needed 13. So he's going to burst into flames. What is his, but what is his dex ability, though? Cause his dex ability they is... They get modifiers just like uh, player characters do. Oh, I was looking at the wrong one. So the bugbear rolled in 11, which is under the dex 13, but he gets a plus 2, which puts him at 13. So he actually succeeds, Yes. and he does not burst into flames. Yes. Like player characters, monsters also have attribute scores and get modifiers on their rolls. Right. So, since Gwen is done, then it's going to be Dorn's turn. Yes. So Dorn is a little more melee focused. Uh, he has a movement speed uh, in combat of 30 feet, meaning every one of these squares, in this instance, this isn't the same on every map, but every one of these squares equals five feet. So in combat, he can move up to six of these squares in one move. So he's going to go 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Used all of his speed, he's going to run in and attack this bugbear that everybody is picking on. <laughs> uh, <laughs> 
and he is going to take a big old swing at him with his warhammer. All right. And he rolls uh, a 10. His modifier on the attack is plus four. Oh. That so is 14. Which misses. Yes. Because the, the bugbear has an AC of 16. Yes. So Dorn winds up, he has him right where he wants him, and then he just whiffs. <laughs> Maybe I kind of cast the bonfire at the same time, and they both got together, <laughs> and then it just negated. Threw you know, you can make up whatever story that you want on yeah. why the DM, these things happen. The DM has that power. So all in all, not the best surprise round, uh, but they did at least do a little bit of damage from Reardon's bow before before the round was over. Right. So now that round is is done. Uh, the second round of combat begins. The From bug the top. Bear, yeah, the bugbears and goblins are now aware and are participating in, in the act, combat. Right. So we're out of the surprise round. Let's go to the second round. We start with Reardon. Again. Again. He's so at the top. Reardon feeling like he's uh, carrying everybody so far. He rolls with his bow. Uh, he gets uh, a five... Uh, plus 7 is a 12. Um, this time, he was not shooting at the bugbear. He was shooting at this goblin right here. Um, but he did not make it, because the goblin's AC is 15. Yes. So maybe he got a little cocky. He did. He tried to get <laughs> cute, tried to move back and forth. Now he no longer feels like he's carrying everybody. <laughs> That's true. By the way, what is Rudin's AC? Uh, his AC is 15. And then Dorns? Dorns is 18. Wow, that's high. He has uh, pretty good armor on. What about uh, Gwen's? Gwen's is actually, um, what is she? She's, no, I was looking at 30. Her hit points are 30, but her armor class is 13. 13. That's one of the reasons she's not particularly suited for melee combat. That's pretty low as far as AC goes. That's true. She gets hit and it's, it's a thing. Yeah. So, although... We might we might demonstrate that later. <laughs> she has a rebuttal. We'll who's, see if that comes up. Whose turn is it now? It is uh, Goblin 3, Goblin which three. I might make the guy that's, like, furthest away. The one out here messing around in the flowers first thing in the morning? Right. So, goblins have a movement speed of... Isn't it 30? Yes, it's 30. So, they can also move 30 feet per turn. Uh, he's kind of far away from combat, though. So he's going to go 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. He'll get here. Uh, he's going to take a swing at Dorn, would you say? Yes. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and roll. Go ahead. Roll for the goblin, okay. if you don't mind. No, not at all. Uh, oh, he misses. <laughs> yeah, he didn't do particularly well. He rolled a 3. There's no math there. <laughs> Whatever his modifier is, it doesn't matter. It didn't okay. get to 18. Right. So here we go. We have Gwendolyn again. So she's again going to create her bonfire because that's her signature move. She's going to go for the bugbear again. So she rolled a 17. No, the bugbear oh. rolled a 17. The <laughs> <laughs> bugbear rolled a 17. She's not doing... my character's messed up. Yeah. She's not doing a good job. She's not doing well with this bonfire. So maybe, you know, she's a little nervous. Maybe she had a little too much dwarven L the night before. <laughs> we'll see what that's about. All but right. So whose turn is it now? Now it's bugbear one, which I had pegged as this, this one here. dude right here. So I think what he would do is turn and come after the dude who seems to be whiffing at him with a hammer in the air. Mm, good call. Creating a little wind around his head. Right. Yeah. So go ahead. I'll do it. Okay. Um, 17. What is his bonus to his attack with that morning star? Four to hit. So that's Sorry. 21. So that's going to hit Dorn. Yeah. That's yeah, going to hit him is. hard. Uh, what is so the it's damage? A 2d8 plus 2. 2d8 plus 2. So we got 2d8, which comes out to. A total of 7. 7 plus 2. Is 9. 9. So he takes 9 damage. That's what a, was his hit points? What's he has one? he has 27 hit points. That's high for level 3. Yeah, so a, a bugbear can do a pretty substantial amount of damage if they uh, if they can hit. Yeah. Yeah, so he's down to 18? 
He is. He is. Dorn, math. Dorn got hit hard. Here's the thing about D&D. You'll get good at your math. <laughs> <laughs> Who's next? Uh, we are down to Goblin 2, which I had this guy. This guy right here. is Goblin 2. So there's a campfire sort of in the way here. It's in this square. Uh, I'm going to say this square. Do you think this one here is empty? Because the fire's in this square. The little... The little uh, tile piece that we have. I think so, because if it was standing straight up, it wouldn't be out of that five foot. Each okay. of these is each of these squares is a five foot radius. Yeah. And their campfire is not going to be yeah. bigger than five yeah. feet. This is also coming up in the air. You know, we're trying to stuff three dimensions into two, so it doesn't <laughs> always work perfectly. It's an illusion. Well, uh, DM, where is this goblin gonna go? I think that this goblin is actually going to, since he can move thirty. feet, feet mm -hmm. he is going to come around to the back side okay. of Dorn. So he's gonna flank Dorn. He's gonna come around over here. Dorn's cape is in the way. His cape is awfully rigid. It must be cold. <laughs> so he's gonna flank Dorn. Now what this means uh, with flanking, I know a lot of DMs apparently don't do this, this rule. Uh, flanking means you get uh, advantage on your attack, which basically mm -hmm. means you roll your d20 twice, but you get to take the highest of the two. Right. I like it, especially I think it's real, and I think that it can give your players an advantage yeah. that is very interesting, so they it, try to do maneuvers like flanking. Yes. It can also be a danger, as we see here. Obviously, yeah. Dorn is in a lot of trouble. To flank, however, you have to be on exact opposite sides of the same character, which is why this goblin did not get advantage. Mm -hmm. So I assume the goblin's going to take a big old swing at Dorn. Yes. Okay. So with advantage... He got a 20, which is a critical hit. That's a critical hit. If you roll a 20, <laughs> you automatically hit no matter who you're attacking and no matter their armor class. You automatically hit. Yeah. So with that 20, uh, the rule is you roll... Your damage twice. Um, right. I honestly don't remember the rule in the book because I exclude the modifier from that. Uh, so you would roll the base damage twice and then add the modifier. So we have a, for a goblin, we have a 1d6. Okay. So, so if would, we're following your rules, we would roll that once, but you're not going to add the plus two. Correct. And I would actually. Or twice. You're going to roll it twice. Correct. Um, now, a lot of people say instead of 1d6, you roll 2d6, uh, and then you add the modifier. I like it so that you don't roll them both. You don't just turn it into 2d6, because then if you roll two ones, you only did two damage on a, on a hit. Oh, okay. I like to do where you roll the one, and then you double what you get. So you double the base damage as part Ooh, of the crit. That can be... It, and then you add the modifier. In this case, interesting. <laughs> in this case, I want I want a critical hit to feel like a critical hit. Mm -hmm. In this case, he rolled a five. So that's ten. That's ten plus his modifier, which is twelve. So Dorn got hit hard by being flanked. Yes, he did. He is down to an eighteen minus twelve. He is down to six hit yeah. points. Yeah, yeah. Who's next? So, there's also something else you could do before we move on mm -hmm. where um, you can do the two die and then add it. Mm -hmm. uh, I kind of like Sean's method because it can I let you off the hook or it can really get you. I, I use a lot of players and DMs use these. Uh, you have uh, tables, critical tables. Yes, exactly. Um, where basically what happens is after a critical hit and after your damage, you roll the d20 again, and then you have a table, and depending on what you roll the second time, you might get a bonus. So So roll your die for me. What did you get? He got a 12. He got a 12. So I look it up on my list, and on 12 it says that he is stunned, and he doesn't get to make a move next time. Yes. So not only did he get hit really hard, He's, on the next round he, he doesn't, doesn't do anything. Go. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, are we using that in this round? Um, in this encounter? I mean, do you want to kill Dorn off? <laughs> <laughs> Not really. I'm fond of him. Okay, well, you took a lot of damage, so we'll just yeah. let it, that ride. So but that, that's an example of something that might happen. That's a fun way. A lot of people don't use them. A lot of people do use them. 
I'm one, at least for the time being, I am considering it. I also use a critical fumble table. So if you roll a one on your attack and you automatically miss, you would roll uh, again on the d20 and then something bad might happen. Right. Um, I've run combat encounters where a goblin gets so eager that he rolls a one and then trips over a rock and lands on his own sword and kills himself. <laughs> uh, so it can it can get pretty pretty crazy, um, depending on whether or not you like that. In this case, though, Dorn's just really badly hurt. Right. All right, let's move on. It's Bugbear 2's turn. He's over here. Okay. Where is this Bugbear going? Well, I think that he sees that you guys have his kin have okay. wrapped up with Dorn. So he decides that he's going to make a beeline for... Um, well, actually, he's going to move out of the way of cover and take a shot at Reardon. Okay. With his javelin. Okay. So he'll come 5, 10, 15, say right here. Sure. Where he has, or maybe maybe right here. This This can be fun sometimes. This way, he has more or less a clear shot. Goblins are short. We'll say that's good. Mm -hmm. Unless he critically fouls, and then he might shoot the goblin in the face, but whatever. Correct. So, um, he's in range for a javelin. We're going to do away with that. Now, Reardon is behind this bush. Does he get any cover? Yeah, he's going to get like partial cover for being behind okay. a bush. So basically, uh, the bugbear is going to have disadvantage on his attack roll. Right. Uh, and he's going to go with the javelin? You yes. Think? Okay. Ooh, so the 10. disadvantage probably saved him. Uh, he rolled a 19 with one. The other one got a 10. Mm -hmm. What is his bonus with the javelin? His bonus with the javelin is plus four. So Reardon's AC is 15. So with disadvantage, maybe the javelin goes flying by Reardon's head. It's a close call, right. but he doesn't get hit. Right. He's just like, oh, they know where I am now. Yep. For sure. Okay, moving on, we're going to go to... I believe it's this last goblin. Goblin 1. Okay. And he is armed with a short bow. Yes. What so is he going to do? He sees his buddy aim into the bushes, so he's going to do the same thing. Okay. So you'll have him also attack? Sure. Again? Yeah, from a, a distance. Yes, and again with uh, disadvantage because Reardon's still behind this bush. Right. 12 and... Yeah, 12 and 16. So he'll take the 12. Right. What is his bonus? With Plus the... 4 to hit. So that's 16. So he hits Reardon. He hits him. So he gets the... The short bow is 1d6 plus 2. Well, he didn't hit him hard. He only rolled a 1. <laughs> so 1 plus 2 is 3? Yeah. Reardon takes 3 damage. And his um, hit points are? He has 25 hit points. Nice. Well, rather, he had 25 hit points. <laughs> so he's at 22 now. Yes. So now we are going to move on to Dorn, who is last in our initiative. Okay. Dorn is, we decided not to stun him. Yeah. Give him a chance. And Dorn is a little desperate. Well, let's talk about what it means to disengage. We can. Um... I was actually going to have him do something else, but go ahead and talk about it. But that. we can talk about it. So say yes. you get very desperate and you want to run away. Now, this would probably not be the best thing to do, considering there are three around you. If you choose to disengage, your enemy gets a free shot at you. So if he moves out of melee with these guys, each one of them is going to get to swing at him. Yeah, they get a free attack. It doesn't count as their attack for it's their turn. It's a bonus action. It can be pretty intense. Yes, so um, you can disengage. It might be worth it, say, if you have one enemy and you want to take that chance. Yes. But in this case, not something Yes. I think that he should take his chances with. Yeah, no, because that's with such a low amount of hit points. That three attacks that are free, mm -hmm. that's, you know, there's a decent chance that even with his eye armor class, he's done for. Right. So, it being Dorn's turn, he's a little desperate. Uh, he's going to try something, uh, despite the fact that we said he was going to focus on melee, 
He's going to use some magic to try to get himself free. I don't blame him. <laughs> he is going uh, to cast uh, the spell Thunder Wave. Nice. Now, Thunder Wave uh, is, it's like um, Gwen's uh, bonfire spell. He doesn't make an attack roll. The characters around him have to make a saving roll. Okay. Now, Thunder Wave is a cube that emerges from him. Uh, its range is a total of 15 feet. Oh, nice. So all three of these guys have to make a constitution save. And what about that goblin on the other side of the fire? Uh, well, it emerges from him. The total cube itself is 15 feet. So 5, 10, 15? Yeah, so this one, I believe, is out of range. Okay. Yeah. This is an immediate call to these three. Okay. Attacking him. Very good. So uh, we're going to go ahead. Um, we'll have the bugbear be the blue D20, and okay. the two goblins will be the two red ones. Very good. Easy. So they have to make a con save. Now, I think Dorn got pretty lucky because they all roll real low. What are their con bonuses first? Well, it's a plus zero for goblins. And what about bugbears? And they're a plus one. They're so a plus they're pretty one. pretty low. So both of the goblins rolled a four. Mm-hmm. And the bugbear rolled a six. Right, so they're going down. Yeah, they had to get 12 on this save. Roll for the bonfire. I'm going to do something fun. It's not Gwen's turn yet. No, I'm still, like, roll for the bonfire for a save for the bonfire. Oh, okay. I This is where you can kind of make things up. And 16? 16! Oh, no, the bonfire saved itself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. I, th I thought you, the campfire, I thought you meant so, your attack roll. here's what I was thinking with the bonfire. If it rolled pretty low, then I was going to actually have it be waved out onto the goblin behind it and I set see. him on fire, but he had to make a dex okay. to see if okay. he sets on fire or not. I see what you're doing. So you okay. can add in, like, fun little things like that. I thought you were talking about Gwen's bonfire spell. No, I was I was basing it off of that spell. Like he would have to make a dex thirteen, right? But so, it didn't work out. <laughs> so what happens? Both of the goblins and the bugbear failed their saving throw. Okay. Now the thunder wave spell, it's pretty cool. First, all three of them take two d eight thunder damage. Nice. He's like Thor. <laughs> Is that so, why you play? Is that why you picked him out? Is that what he made him for? Pretty much. <laughs> He's a Tempest cleric. So they they all take 2d8 thunder damage, and they are pushed 10 feet away from Dorn. Nice. So this spell could not have worked better. That's great. So let's roll damage. With no attack of opportunity. No attack of opportunity because he didn't disengage. He pushed right. them away. That does not trigger an attack of opportunity. So let's roll damage for each one. Uh, we'll roll for this bugbear first. Bugbear one. Uh, good rolls. Uh, ten damage. Nice. And then he gets pushed ten feet away. So he's back here now. Very good. Let's roll for this goblin right there. 2d8. Uh, ten damage. Wow. Now, goblins only have seven hit points. Yeah. So it flings his corpse ten feet away. <laughs> he is now laying here dead. I think that was Goblin 2, wasn't it? Uh, yes. Yeah, he did. Goblin 2 is now dead. And then let's roll for Goblin 3. 2d8. 9 damage. Oof. Flings his corpse into this little pond over here. That was number 3, wasn't it? That was number 3. Mm -hmm. So, Dorn got a little desperate. He got himself surrounded. <laughs> and he did what he had to do. He called down the thunder. And it seems to have saved him a little bit. That's amazing. All right. That is amazing. So next. So Goblin 2 and 3 are dead. I believe that was the last uh, turn of the round. It is. So oh. now it's back to Reardon. It's back to Reardon. Reardon is going to do his own little spell because rangers have magic as well. And Dorn's spell created a perfect little scenario for him. He is going to do what's called Hail of Thorns. I knew it! <laughs> <laughs> Hail of Thorns is a ranged uh, attack spell that uh, is particularly good for somebody like Reardon. 
what he's going to do is he's going to make an attack with his bow on this bugbear. And basically what happens is this bugbear, even though he's just been attacked, he also has to do this. He has to make a deck save, as does this goblin. Every What it is is that every creature within five feet of the spell's target. Mm -hmm. So he's going to attack this bugbear. Normal attack. 13 plus 7 is 20. Mm. That's not a critical hit, by the way. You have to roll the natural 20. Right. Uh, so that attack hits. Okay. The bow is 1d8 plus 3. Oof. So he's going to hit that bugbear, does four damage. Mm -hmm. uh, plus three is seven. Seven damage. Yes. So, but the spell uh, is a bonus action, so he can do this on the same turn. The bugbear and this goblin both have to make a dex saving throw. In this case, they have to get 13. So we're going to do the blue uh, for the bugbear and the red for the goblin. Awesome. Have them go there. So what are their dex bonuses? For They're both plus two. They both get two? Yes. So neither of them got the save. They got 11 and 12. Ooh. So how it works then with that, that spell, a little magic arrow pops out and attacks both of them. Nice. And they each take 1d10 piercing damage. Yeah. All right, go for it. Yeah. We'll see how bad they're mushed. The goblin takes 10 damage. He's done. He is dead. He just falls down dead. He's full of uh, He's... imaginary arrows? Yeah. Magical a arrows. A little magic shard <laughs> pierced him. The, the bugbear uh, takes an additional 6 damage. And he's down. He is dead as well. He is down. He falls Not back. as squished as the <laughs> poor he, goblins. He lands but... on top of the goblin and just crushes the poor thing's lifeless body. <laughs> so, in two turns of combat, this encounter... Went from com something that was it, very... It completely flipped. <laughs> yeah, something that was very futile and dangerous to... We're creaming them now. But yeah. you never know. There is one bugbear left. There's one bugbear left. And it's all lucky rolls of the die. It really is. So. This makes it interesting. So it's Reardon's turn it, is, is done now. Yes. All three goblins are dead. And I believe bugbear one, bugbear two. Bugbear one is down. Bugbear one is dead. Yes. Whose turn is it now? It's Gwendolyn's turn. It is Gwendolyn's turn. So she's actually going to come forward. She's feeling a little better. Okay. So how many to the back of the log? Uh, let's see. Well, let's five. say she has to go around the bush. Okay. So 5, 10, 15, 15 20, 20, 25. 20. So that's fine. She can go that far since she has 30 to move. Okay. And then she's going to sick an Eltridge Blast okay. onto this... Bugbear. All right. So how how does an Eltridge Blast work? Well, it's different from the Bonfire. The Bonfire is a deck stave on the part of the other. On the part of the target, yeah. Right. And the Eltridge Blast is something that I have to make, an not unlike shooting a bow so or it's an attack wielding roll. a Warhammer. It's yeah. an attack roll. A spell attack roll. So I'm going to do, my casting would be with a d20. So I have a 7. But I'm going to add my modifier for magic, which is charisma, mm -hmm. which is plus three, plus my proficiency bonus, which is plus two. So all in all, that's plus five. So I end up with seven plus five. Okay. Which is 12. Which is 12. What's the bugbear's AC? It's um, 16, so she doesn't hit. She does She's not hit. She's not doing well. A little, a little ray of energy flies by the bugbear's head. <laughs> you know, that, she just can't get it going. She's like... Poof. She had how and much it, dwarven ale did Gwendolyn have I last night? I don't know. Night? I don't even think she blew out the bonfire because it was right <laughs> in the way. So. Oops. Oh, she's right. like, oh god. So it's the bugbear's turn. It is the bugbear's right. turn. Yeah. Okay. Good job. What's he gonna do, DM? Oh my gosh, what is the bugbear gonna do? He's a little bit like shaken, but he's gonna actually come up and engage with um, with Dorn again. Okay. So he's going to come around his buddy. 
and he's gonna come up right here. Dorn, Crushes him on the way in. Dorn will of course, Dorn will of course turn and and face the oncoming threat. And he is going to stick his morning star on Dorn. Okay. And he gets a ten plus four is fourteen. That will miss. So he misses. Dorn's AC of course is eighteen. So he just raises his shield at the last minute and claims Ding. the morning star off of it. All right. Now it is Dorn's turn. And it's Dorn's turn. So he bounces off the one attack. And, and he swings around. He's going to swing his own hammer. Epically and gets a two. <laughs> he gets a two. He's going to focus on melee in this upcoming encounter. He's going to focus on melee in this upcoming encounter. He kills three enemies at once, basically, with magic. With magic. And his two melee attacks have been total duds. <laughs> He's doing well. It looked great, though. He looked pretty heroic. He looked was... good. Clang. Swoof. <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. When All they right. tell the tales later in the tavern, he will be heroic. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, yeah, that's part of the thing. You survive, you get to tell your tall tale, right? And that's exactly how it works. All right. Reardon, what are you going to do, man? Well, Reardon has a, a feat. Oh. He has the sharpshooter feat. Let's talk about feats. So feats are extra abilities. According to the rule as it's written, when you reach fourth level, you can choose to improve an ability score, or you can take a feat, which is an extra ability that gives you a little more functionality uh, depending on what kind of feat you take. Uh, a lot of DMs, myself included, Grant a feat at level one as sort of a little flavor to kind of give a character something a little more to stand out, make them a little more unique, make them special. Sure. Uh, Reardon took the sharpshooter feat. That's that is a key one. Yes. For his um, for a ranger, ranger specifically for his class. someone that uses ranged combat a lot. Uh, I'll go ahead and read you the sharpshooter feat. Attacking at long range does not impose disadvantage on your attack rolls, and your ranged weapon ignores half cover and three quarters cover. Now, he's in melee combat with uh, Dorn. Um, normally, you would get disadvantage for shooting at someone who's in melee because it would be sort of a cover thing. Uh, I home rule it so that the sharpshooter also does away with that because it seems like it would fit the sharpshooter feet. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's a little overpowered. That's up for you to decide in your games. Reardon is going to use this feat, and he's just going to shoot at this, uh, this bugbear. Awesome. No penalties. None. Uh, he's going to make the attack roll. Of course, that doesn't account for <laughs> shooting like crap. Uh... He misses. Oh, no. <laughs> and it is... Gwendolyn's? It's Gwendolyn's turn. If I remember So, right. once again, she's going to... At well, she's going to attempt a bomb fire because she's afraid that she's going to hit Dorn if she tries to do any sort of ranged attack. Right, because so, she does not have the sharpshooter feet. Right. So, she's going to do that, and so then the bugbear has to make a dex save. Okay. Do you want to roll for him? Sure. Four. Uh, he got a four, no, so he he's... fails. So the space he's in, a bonfire erupts around him. So he's got to take 1d8 damage. 1d8. Three. He takes three. And Gwendolyn's happy that she did something to <laughs> <laughs> I did it, I did it. He's on fire. All right. Now the cool thing about this is his magic. So unless he moves out of the space he's going to continue to burn yeah so the next his next time he's going to make another save and then we'll see if he burns more yeah so the way the spell works i pull it up here to read it uh any creature in the bonfire space when the spell is cast must succeed on a throw or take fire damage a creature must also make the saving throw when it moves into the bonfires uh space for the first time or ends its turn there mm -hmm. so he could move out um if he doesn't move out of that space he has to make another saving roll. right okay so next is actually his turn okay and bugbears are not that smart what's their what's his intelligence score uh he's at a 10 
<laughs> Plus so. zero. Not smart, not particularly Actually, dumb. I was looking at the goblin. He's oh. at an eight minus one. So kind of dumb. Yeah, he's pretty bad. He might um, be, you know, blindly focused on Dorn. He is blindly focused. He's also, it enrages him more. Mm -hmm. So we feel this heat mm -hmm. going on, and he um, takes a wild swing okay. at Dorn. All right, so you'll have he's him attack. He's just freaking out. And uh, he will miss again. He will miss again. Okay. And then he ends his turn there, so he will have to... Make another deck save. Make another deck save, yep. Okay. What does he get? A two. Yeah. Okay. He fails. So then we roll a 1d8. Two. And he takes two more damage. Okay. Okay. There we go. So now we have Dorn. It's Dorn's turn again. He swears Melee is going to do something this time. He swings his hammer. He misses, I believe. <laughs> the, the, the fire's warm in his face. He can't focus. His, he's kind of tearing up yeah. a little bit. Uh, plus, he wears chain mail, so he's getting kind of hot. It's uncomfortable. Yeah, 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 I would say so. We're doing well. We're doing really well. <laughs> yeah, if Fank... <laughs> Uh, the gods that Dorn and Reardon pray to for that one round of combat. Mm -hmm. Those two consecutive mm -hmm. turns really saved them. That's true. All right, Reardon. You going to save the day? He's going to try. He's going to try once again to take advantage of his sharpshooter feet. Okay. He's going to shoot into the fire, which sounds like a heavy metal song. <laughs> uh, 13. He's going to hit because he gets plus 7 mm -hmm. on his bow. Awesome. So, he... 1d10 is the damage. Awesome. He takes 6 plus 3 damage. So the bugbear takes 9 damage total. Very good. So that's 22 minus 9. 13 damage. This bugbear is hanging around. Yep. Bugbears have high hit points. So. Yeah, they're, they're pretty tough. They can be... The highest of the lower level yeah. of monsters. Yeah, they can yeah. be a, a good challenge for a, a low level party. Our, this party is all level 3 characters and you saw how easily goblins went down and a couple of bugbears are giving them a little bit of trouble. Yep, yeah, for sure. Alright, Gwendolyn, what do you think? Can you do a blast without hitting anybody? <laughs> Let's try it. Well, let me see what... Yeah, let's do the blast again. The Eldritch Blast? Yeah, we'll see. Just don't roll a one. Don't roll a one. Oh, yay, 16. Yeah. So she's going to hit him. She is. Um, Before you even apply her bonus. She yeah, hits. so she's good to go. And then she's going to have a 1d10 plus 3. 1d10. I'll roll that for Thank you. Thank you. Uh, 2 plus 3 is 5. Plus three is five. So we're slowly whittling this guy this, down. This, this bugbear is he just <laughs> won't quit. Yep. And I believe it's the bugbear's turn if I What's remember. Thirteen right? minus five. Eight. <laughs> That's what I thought, but then I blanked out. <laughs> Don't be afraid to ask for help, kids. <laughs> All right. So the next is yeah, is the bugbear. Okay. He's actually going to step out of the fire. Okay. But that means that he incurs a attack, attack of opportunity from Dorn. Which way is he going to step though? It doesn't matter. Well, if well he's he, stepping away. If he steps here though, he's out of the fire, but he's still. Well, I'm within... going to have him back up it's because he's dumb. He's well. There's the bonfire on one side, right? Yeah. And then there's um, the camp weird in there, so he feels like he just needs to back away from both of these things. Okay. So I'm going to say that he's going to back like this. Okay. Which will incur, he gets out of the fire, but he ends up with a attack of opportunity so, from Dorn. Yeah, so Dorn uh, can take a free attack. Um, here, uh, there is one feat. I don't believe it's the one that Dorn has. Excuse the paper rustling. I mean, you're going to make a lot of... There's a lot of rules and references, so... Yeah. You're, you'll there's, never memorize everything. You'll, you'll have never, your papers. Yeah. Uh, we use apps. We use the computer. Yeah. So Dorn has uh, the Sentinel feat, 
Um, and that basically says when you hit a creature with an opportunity attack, the creature's speed becomes zero for the rest of the turn. Ooh. Meaning if the bugbear were trying to fully run away, if he were to step here and then be hit by that attack of opportunity, he can't move. Mm -hmm. he, he gets hit so hard that Dorn sort of dazes him. Nice. Um, so Dorn gets his free attack roll. Awesome. With his hammer. And boy, did he pick a time to deliver. He rolled a 20. Oh, he's dead. <laughs> Just... So the Warhammer does 1d8 plus 2 bludgeoning damage. All right, well, let's see what you get. Uh, 1d8. Uh, it's a critical hit, so it doubles. Uh, he rolled a 6, so he gets 12 plus 2. He does 14 damage. Oh, he smashes him. He so... absolutely smashes him. So it's more that as he backs away... Instead, what he does is position his face perfectly for Dorn to just catch him right in the jaw. The bugbear just off the ground, back dead onto the ground. And that's it. And that's it. And everybody is safe. No one died. Well, Except for the bad guys. Dorn's at six. So Dorn's hurt have... badly. But so they... he can either... He has... Doesn't he have a spell for himself if he is hurt badly or for others? He has a prayer of healing spell. Mm -hmm. um, Reardon also has some some spells. So you can use spells yeah. to get some hit points back up, especially if you have to keep going. Correct. Um, the hey. best way is to do a long rest or yeah. short rest, depending on your character. So mm -hmm. Reardon's an elf, so he only needs four hours. Yeah. Versus and, Dorn and my tiefling need eight hours. And with a short rest, you get to use what are called hit die, mm -hmm. uh, where you can roll a certain number of hit die and recover a certain number of hit points, depending on what you roll. Long rest, you, you recover everything. Right. Uh, but since this is combat's over, so we're not going to keep track of any movement, Reardon's going to come up here, maybe give him a gentle ribbing. He's going to cast Cure Wounds, uh, nice. another spell. Kind of give Dorn a little bit of a, a pick-me-up. Uh that's combat. Pretty much. You forgot about health potions. If you have health potions, you can drink a health <laughs> potion. Depending on what kind, you recover you know, more hit points than not. I do like to give out health potions at times. They are expensive if you want to buy them, yeah. but um, I think they're a nice addition to gold. Exactly. It's a not, not an uncommon item to be found when you're looting the, the, the enemies you've just defeated or ransacking their fort or something like that. So that's it. That's, that's it. the basics. I think that we touched a little bit on everything. If there's something else that you would like to see or you have any questions or you're wondering how do we address this sort of situation, please feel free to comment below or find me on Twitter. I'm at Jack Casey, J-A-C-Q. Thanks, Sean. Thank you for having me.